distinguishing administrative academic research experience of about 35 years. He has worked as director, chairman board of governors, chairman finance committee, chairman senate, chairman building works committee at NIT Puducherry. He has worked as dean research and consultancy, dean planning and development, dean faculty welfare, and dean industrial research development and consultancy, head of electro, uh, electrical engineering research uh, department, coordinator, chief coordinator, and professor in charge of TIFIT Core, Chief Vigilance Officer, Chairman Admission Committee, and many more at NIT Hamirpur and member of Senate at NIT Calicut. He has received several awards, prizes, honors, including Best Educationist Award, Ministry of uh, Energy Department of Power Prize by the Institution of Engineers, etc. We welcome you, sir, and request you to say a few words for the occasion. Sir, uh, you are muted, sir. Thank you, Dr. Shika Beta, for your nice words. Respected Professor S. T. Saxena, Honorable Pro Chancellor, Professor Bodhraj Mataji, Director, Sector 128 Campus, and Director RID, Professor D. K. Rai, Dean A and R Academic and Research, as well as Vice Chancellor of JP University Anup Shah. Deans and heads of various departments, Professor Vikas Saxena, head department of computer science engineering and IT, Dr. Shikha Mehta, Dr. Mukta Goel, and Dr. Prana Batra, the winner of this FDP, dist distinguished experts, uh, eminent personalities, faculty members, and dear participants. First of all, this summer school, it, first of all, it's a matter of great pleasure to welcome each one of you for joining this two week summer school on quantum computing and its application. Organized by the Department of Computer Science and IT, JP Institute of Information Technology, Leoda, from 25th July to 6th August, 20. I am happy to be, be a part of this inaugural session. The aim of this event is to share knowledge and enlighten academicians and researchers about this latest research here. The JP education system consists of two wings, the higher wing, higher education wing, and the school wing, which is fully backed and supported by the JP group of companies through its non-profitable trust Jai Prakash Seva Sansthan. It, it provides education across all spectrum of learning through its 31 schools, six private IT, IT, two polytechnics, one postgraduate college, one B. Ed. college, one construction skill training institute, one international learning and vocational center, and four universities catering to the learning of over 30,000 students. Four universities are JIT Noda which established in the year 2001, Jeju IT Bhaknagat, established in the year 2002, JIT Gunna, established in the year 2003, JP University Anup Shair, established in the year 2014. It is a matter of pride to all of us for the achievement of the JP group in establishing three universities in a row. The credit of this achievement goes to the founder of JP group, Sri Jayaprakash Gorji, a man of great vision and excellence, rarely found in an individual. The JIT Noda is aimed at becoming a center of excellence in the field of information technology and related emerging area of education, innovation, training, and research for producing professionals who shall be leader in the innovation, entrepreneurship, creativity, and management. The university offers undergraduate programs that is BTEC and BBA, as well as postgraduate programs, MSc, MTEC, Integrated MTEC, MBA, and doctoral PhD program in various disciplines of engineering, science, and management. Department of Computer Science and IT have 
excellent labs most of the faculty members are guiding good number of phd student and also have research projects financed by the reputed government research organization department of computer science is organizing every year international conference which is of very much repute i am extremely happy to know that the distinguished expert from various highly reputed organization and academic institute and industry will deliver their expert lecture in emerging technology related with quantum computing and its application i wish the organizer highly experienced speakers and participant of this fdp a big success thank you and jai hind thank you so much sir for sharing your valuable thoughts you have always been a constant source of motivation for all of us now i would like to introduce a professor b r mehta director jiit sir is working as director research innovation and development from Gen january 2022 onwards in a newly established directorate of research innovation and development drid drid is engaged in enriching and promoting research and innovation activities aimed to transform the four jp universities to a vibrant and thriving innovation eco ecosystem he has he also has an additional responsibility of director jp institute of information technology sector 128 campus before joining jp university system he has about 37 years of teaching research and administrative experience at indian institute of technology delhi he has worked as dean research and development head department of physics and kamla chair professor he has received lifetime achievement award 2021 from iit delhi for his outstanding contributions to scientific research and teaching he has been principal coordinator of formal international collaborations with university of desburg germany epfl lusiana switzerland max planck institute mainz germany university of dresden germany university college london to name a few he is also the co-founder of not for profit trust vidyam vanti education and empowerment trust working towards providing high quality science education and hands on experience to needy primary school students we welcome you sir and request you to say a few words for the occasion good morning professor sooth and all my colleagues and uh, especially eminent speakers from outside very good morning so i am very happy to be participating in this faculty development program on quantum computing because of many reasons uh, i think you have chosen a very apt topic for faculty development program this is a really emerging areas and also it's based on a very strong collaboration with very basic physics and quantum mechanics and a very applied area of computation com computing and computer physics uh, computer science so it's it's uh, let's hope that this area emerges a very becomes a very strong area and we are able to we are already seeing and this becomes a i understand that this is it is a totally different type of computing and it will be very interesting how these two areas merge together and becomes a very very important area so i congratulate the organizers for selecting a very very uh, apt uh, title for the training program as a director of research innovation and development especially for those participating from outside and also from ramanujan ramanujan college i would like to mention very briefly that jp education system is setting up state of the art digital learning center and we are setting up a innovation hub at jit sector 128 campus and this innovation hub will have uh, active sport and mentoring 
the startups which will come from JIT students and faculty. And also we will be engaged in setting up a very, very uh, sophisticated uh, digital learning center, which has all the facilities required for a very state of art studio uh, in any educational institute. And in fact, we have set up a centers of excellence on artificial intelligence for education in which many of the participants here from computer science department are participating. So merger of all these three activities, artificial intelligence for education, digital learning center and the innovation hub, that's what we are looking at. And we will be part of this ecosystem which is developing at the international level where artificial intelligence, teaching, and all kinds of things are being connected together. So I, uh, again, in, at the end, I will say that I'm very happy to participate in this workshop, faculty development program, and I wish all the participants a great success. And I'm sure all of you will enjoy the beautiful technical program which has been set up. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your insights. Now I would like to introduce Professor S.P. Agarwal. Professor S.P. Agarwal, Principal Ramanujan College, University of Delhi, is a dynamic visionary, exemplary leader, outstanding administrator, passionate researcher, and a motivational teacher and mentor. As an administrator and leader, he has brought about a paradigm change in the functioning of Ramanujan College by being at the forefront of establishing structures, systems, and processes implementing creative and innovative ideas and leading by example. As a result of his guidance and concerted efforts, the college got an A-grade accreditation from NAT. The World Federation of Academic and Educational Institutions chose Professor Agarwal as one of the India's 50 most influential principals. He was also conferred the top 30 iconic principal award for excellence and leadership in education by Dynergic Business Solutions Golden Aim Award. With his able administrative and academic understanding, Professor Agarwal has revolutionized the capacity building module of the Ministry of Education sponsored uh, Pandit Madhan Mohan Malviya uh, uh, technology scheme by training over one lakh teachers under the ages of the Teaching Learning Center Ramanujan College during the COVID-19 inflicted pandemic period. Professor S.P. Agarwal was awarded the most prestigious Special Appreciation Award for his exemplary service at the University of Delhi by Acting Vice Chancellor Professor P.C. Joshi, University of Delhi. We welcome you, sir, and request you to share your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shikha Mehta, for a nice introduction. Uh, good morning and welcome to all the dignitaries uh, and our young participants who have joined us in this unique initiative of summer school by Ramanujan College. On behalf of uh, Ramanujan College, I once again welcome all of you. And uh, basically, Ramanujan College is, uh, you know, specializing in three areas, mathematical sciences, uh, commerce and management, and uh, humanities and social sciences. And uh, let me tell you, the Ramanujan College uh, recently uh, accredited A++, uh, 3.71, uh, highest in the country and highest among Delhi University colleges. And as uh, Professor Mehta told that uh, our center, uh, you know, given by Ministry of Education, Pandit Madan Mohan Malvi National Mission for Teachers and Teaching has already trained more than 150,000 teachers in various, uh, you know, discipline oriented, research oriented and technology oriented uh, programs. Now this unique initiative of summer school is basically for all our young minds to, uh, to you know, basically familiarize the new technologies. Uh, we have already done one program on augmented reality and virtual reality. And uh, the college is basically a, a hub of uh, IT having its own EDX portal on uh, you know private cloud. Uh, we have recently acquired HoloLens for mixed reality, and a uh, lot of initiatives. Uh, you know the Department of Computer Science, uh, Mathematics, and Statistics are taking 
in order to reach to each and every uh, you know stakeholders in the country that is our initiative and as you know that these are all free courses i mean there is nothing is being charged uh, the jp institute is not uh, you know new to us uh, we we are doing several activities with them because one of our chairman mr goswami is fond of uh, all jp uh, institutions and uh, they always encourage us to collaborate with them and uh, i'm glad today the the who's who, who's who of uh... Uh, sir you are muted now please unmute yourself sorry please sorry, unmute. sorry. Yeah. yes i'm so sorry uh we will continue to do these programs uh, in future also and uh, another important though i am not uh, you know in the field of computer science or basically the quantum computing but as i told you the ramanujan college initiatives you know the researchers are working on various quantum cloud platforms like ibm uh, quizkit amazon bracket uh, gcp circ and uh, qrng this month nist released post quantum encryption finalist our researchers are working on khaber and find different use cases of hybrid mode with pqe and classical algorithm also let me tell you to all our young friends that government of india is taking lot of initiative and they have allocated more than 8000 uh, crores of rupees for quantum uh, uh, you know initiatives and quantum computing but they are not finding people you know to do that so these kind of workshops will definitely create a uh, you know a uh, 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 capacity building in this area and that is our always our initiative that uh, we create capacity building among our teaching faculties and capacity building among among our young minds so with this once again i be great and we will continue to do something good sir thank you so much sir for sharing your insights we look forward to you for many more such collaborations in the future now i would like to share a few insights about the summer school on quantum computing and applications across two weeks we have 22 sessions and 19 speakers from india and abroad we have eminent speakers from ibm usa ibm india the california institute of technology california boston cube sci university of leipzig germany qlab software limited delhi technical university mahindra university hyderabad triple iit kota nit srinagar to name a few around 230 participants from india and abroad have expressed their interest to attend this summer school with the support and blessings of all we are sure to have a successful summer school on quantum computing and applications i once again thank you everyone for sparing your valuable time and spending this time and gracing the occasion of our inaugural uh, ceremony thank you so much everyone every end has a new beginning now it is the time to start the first session of the day so i request dr pail batra to continue the session dr pail thank you ma'am i'll continue from the same yeah our speak our first speaker dr uh, mr sanjay has already joined okay ma'am dr beta please allow us to leave yeah yeah sure, sure thank you thank you thank you so much sir uh, should i start ma'am uh, just a minute let me uh, uh, give the rights to mr sanjay i'm not able oh, just give me a minute sanjay Hmm. Ah, Doctor Pail, uh, Pail, please start. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the day one session. The speaker for our first session is Mr. Sanjay Vishwakarma. He is a research software engineer at IBM Quantum. he is an ibm quantum ambassador 
and working on making quantum accessible to everyone via cloud. He obtained his master's degree from Carnegie Mellon University, Petersburg, Pennsylvania in 2020. He also worked as research assistant at IIT Bombay. He is the founder of a he is the founder of Quantum Grad. Quantum Grad is a non-profit and voluntary one-stop solution for all quantum computing resources, including news, articles, publications, jobs, and books. It is a community with 100 plus active weekly users. Mr. Sanjay has rich research and industry experience. Previously, he worked as quantum research intern at IBM Research. He also worked as software engineer at BNP Paribas, India Solutions Private Limited. He has various certifications to his name, such as Quizbeat Advocate, IBM Quantum Conversion, and IBM Quantum Challenge. He also published many research papers in many international journals and conferences of repute. We welcome you, sir. Now I request you to start the session. Over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you, Pal, for the brief introduction. And um, I'll just start beginning with my sharing my screen. So let me know if you are able to see my screen. Okay, sir. Yeah. Um, is everyone able to see my screen right now? Yes, sir. We are able to see. Okay. So yeah, as uh, Paul mentioned, I'm a research software engineer at IBM. I'm a research software engineer at IBM and um, I'm based out of California, US. And I work as a, like uh, my more or less like a work is dependent on uh, using machine learning and deep learning sort of thing to um, make better tools for researchers to do a better research on quantum computing. And yeah, I'm a Kiskel advocate as well. So let's begin. So let me start with a brief question. Like, um, why do we need quantum computing? Just one second, I'll just scroll this. Yeah. So let me begin with the first question. Like, why do we need quantum computing? So even if you are uh, buying a cell phone or you're buying a pen, you will be first understanding like what, why do we need, I, I do, do I need this pen? Do I need this phone? So why do we need a quantum computing? So. Let me begin with the, like a simple question, like um, how many ways I can uh, arrange a dinner party of 10 people? So the simple answer will be 10 factorial, and then it will be uh, 10 into nine into eight and this many number of ways. So this problem seems a um, very easy problem for a classical computer to solve, but what if I um, keep adding one more chair to this problem? So if I add one more chair to this problem, it will become 11 factorial, right? And if I add one more chair, it will become 12 factorial. So, seem, so soon a simple problem that seems to be a very simple problem for a classical computer, it grows to an exponential problem. And that's what a classical computer struggle to solve this problem. So now some problems seems to be bigger than you think now, but don't you think we have like um, powerful computers to solve these bigger problems? Uh, for example, we have like IBM super uh, so much computers, which has this many number of bits of storage, but which is not enough um, to stimulate a perfectly model ca caffeine module. So this is a caffeine module. Caffeine has only 24 atoms, but modeling it requires a lot of power. Using a classic computer's perfectly modeled caffeine power would require 10 to 48 bits of storage. And the number of atoms on our universe, entire universe is about 10 to 49. So clearly we have an issue, right? Then some problems are too small to clearly see. Now, the duality of big and small is exactly where the quantum computer lives. Classic computers follows the classical law of physics. Quantum computer follows the law of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is more or less like how things behave on a very small scale, which is very weird. Because of this, quantum computer can tackle very big problems much more efficiently than how classic computers can. Now, let me look. Uh, let us look uh, at uh, another perspective, like why quantum computers seems to be a possible solution today. So now we know that uh, machine learning and deep learning sort of things, training time are doubling every 3.4 months, right? And the classical quantum hardware is doubling every 24 months, which is 7x slower. And this 24 hours law is called as Moore's law. And there's a debatable topic about that Moore's law is dead. So either we have like two possible solutions to um, cater this demand. It's to either like buy more NVIDIA GPUs and train, or we can look for at uh, some powerful architecture. And it seems like a quantum computer seems to be a possible architecture to solve this machine learning and deep learning compute power. Second thing, data generation. We all know that deep learning and machine learning concept existed a long decade ago but it suddenly came into existence, right? It uh, suddenly is in boom. Why it is in boom? Because of the availability of data today. We have, we nearly generate 2.5 quadrillions of bytes of data. 
but how to process this much amount of data and get a possible results from it. We don't have that much powerful architecture, which can give you results in two minutes or 10 minutes, and uh, you will be able to drive the business decisions. No, we need to look at some powerful architecture like quantum computers to get this business decisions. That was another reason why I believe that quantum computer is the future. Now, why quantum computer matters to us? Even though quantum computers are limited in certain ways today, the potential it might guide and take to create a new paradigm in how we solve problems. So quantum computers provide us three things, new algorithms to solve the problems, new approaches to the new approaches to the problems and new technological breakthroughs. Now, uh, what is qubit and why it is special? Let's talk about how, so in classical computers, we have a bit, right? Similarly, in quantum computers, we have qubits. Now, why it is called as qubit? The name comes from a description, a quantum bit of data. So we have taken the QU from a quantum and the bit from the data. So that's why like qubit, it is called as qubit. It's a quantum bit of data. So qubits have special properties, which we'll be exploring in the next slides. So there are different ways in which we can actually build um, a qubit. It is similar to the concept of a bridge where we construct differently, like varying strength and weaknesses, but they all serve the same purpose. So it's more or less like in IBM, we build the qubit using superconducting qubits. And um, there are like more te um, technology that can be used to build the qubits. It's uh, ion trap, superconducting and all, but they all serve the same purpose. Now. Let's talk about the properties, um, what the qubit exists. So let me talk about the first property, which is the superposition. So imagine you have three coins in the in the world of classical computer, classical physics, which is also known as our world right now, because we use classical computers. Each coin can be in the one state. It can be head or tail, right? A one coin. But this means like when we look at all three coins, they can be in only in the one unique order. It can be head, head, tail. It can be head, tail, head, or it can be any of the eight combinations because we have three coins. So it's two raised to three, eight combinations, right? But in the world of quantum, which is also known as size of atoms and electrons, each uh, coin can be in the both states simultaneously. So a given coin can be head and tail both at the same time and not in head and tail. So it can be head, it can be tail, or it can be head and tail both. And this property is called a superposition. And, um, once I spin like three coins, both three coins in superposition, I can see all three eight unique combination all at the one time. So what I mean by this is, so let me explain this power. It's more or less in classical computers. If to have to look at all three states of uh, coins, I need to run my program eight different times. Okay. But if I want to see this all three eight uh, different states in quantum computer, I have to run the program only one time. So for n qubits, I have two raised to n uh, states. And this is how the exponential speed up we have with the quantum architecture right now. We can exponentially speed up the number of um, states to see it. Second property. Let's talk about a second property, which is called entanglement. So uh, remember how I said like quantum mechanics can be very pretty weird and um, it's very difficult to explain. So this is one of these uh, weird thing. It is hard to describe like what's going on. Even Einstein was surprised and he used to say, call it a spooky action at distance. So essentially when two qubits were entangled by using some quantum gates, they become correlated to each other. And even if like I separate the two uh, coins apart from each other, like if I keep one coin in one universe apart and the other coin, other universe apart, I can still say like, um, I can still learn something about the new coin, no matter how far it is. So the second coin also says like me too. So if the one coin is in head, the second coin would also say like, um, it's on, uh, I'm also head. So no matter how much far you, um, Apart this uh, coins, will you, I'll also I'll always learn from something from it. So, yeah. So till now, uh, whatever I have covered is um, quantum computer is a special bit of data called qubits, uh, which follows the law of quantum mechanics. We can use these laws to our advantage, enabling us to put qubits into superposition or to create entanglement. Using these techniques, we estimate a quantum computer would only require one sixty qubits to model uh, to model caffeine, which is much more manageable than ten to forty nine qubits. So let me know if you have any questions till now, whatever I have covered, or I can move on to the next slides. Or I can take all the questions at the, la uh, at the last, or I can take all questions uh, uh, in between as well. So Pyle, let me know how to do. I can take questions Is there any now. Question? Is there any question to any participant till this slide? Sir, I would like to ask that you just explain the entanglement again because most of the people are new here. Okay. So if you go to the entanglement, so it's a property that says um how we can call how we can connect a two qubit together. So it's like if I um correlate the qubit, like if I 
uh, create a uh, correlation between two qubits by using certain number of gates, which I'll be explaining like more into slides because we have a demo session where we'll be explaining the example of this entanglement. So it's more or less says that if I correlate a qubit, I can tell that even if, and if I measure or not measure, I know the qubit will be in the same position, whichever the qubit is one. So it's more or less says like if I am head and I'm correlated to the other qubit, the other qubit will also be head. But if my qubit is tail and I have correlated to other qubit, the other qubit will also be tail. So there is like entanglement. We somehow correlate the qubits and we know like, yeah, these qubits will be in the same. And with this, we use the property to compute a lot of results. Uh, I'll explain this in this more. Uh, we have uh, a demonstration. I'll be explaining this entanglement, how we correlated. Okay, the two sir. Oh. So now we have talked about like uh, what is the qubit and all sort of thing. Now let's look at how actual quantum computers look like in, in real life. So it looks like a Chandler. So the quantum computers at IBM look like a big Chandler. It's a full of cables of sending data and maintaining the environment. It's more or less the way at the bottom, there is a quantum processing chip, which is like about the size of the stamp, like a postal stamp we have. So at the bottom of the, of the quantum computer, we have the quantum processing chip. This is an image of uh, a quantum computer that our scientists are trying to build it here. And now let's talk, um, take a look at a closer um, view of the chip. Yeah. So if you zoom in the chip, you will see the different parts of the chip itself. The dark blue squares, you can see it's the qubits are the quantum coins that we are talking about in the, uh, in the, in the previous slides. And the swiggy lines are the microwave resonators, which is uh, more or less like how the coins are talking to each other and the computer is sending instruction to it. To work it properly, this quantum chip need to be put in a super extremely cold environment and the colder than the outer space, it is like 0 0.015 degree Kelvin. This much cold, we have to keep this quantum processor to work. That's why uh, whenever you see a quantum computer, they're always enclosed in some dilution chamber. So this white part is a dilution chamber that we actually keep to maintain the qubits in a very cold temperature. So that's why like all the quantum computers are not kept outside. They're always enclosed in something because they are very fragile to the noise and they need a very hot, uh, cool temperature to operate. So this is a dilution chamber in which we keep these quantum circuits and quantum computers. Now, one might be uh, thinking like, uh, if the quantum computers are like um, requiring so much temperature to keep it now, how people are able to access it via our, our classical computers. So let me present a video. So this is a video like how we are making the quantum computer accessible via classical systems. So using the classical systems, you make your quantum circuits and you send it towards. Now the it comes to the IBM systems. The IBM systems convert the quantum circuit into pulses. These pulses are now then given to the quantum chip. And now the quantum chip processes that information that pulses. And from the quantum chip, again, the pulses are given back as a result. These quantum pulses are again given back to the IBM quantum systems. The IBM quantum systems converts the pulses into classical bits. And then the classical bits are displayed on the classical systems. This is the workflow that uh, we are uh, we are making and we are making the quantum computer accessible via classical computers right now. So this is the way that we are actually building the quantum computer. And now one might think like what is actually uh, actually the future of quantum computers. So I'll just talk about some of the applications that uh, where the quantum computer future seems. So one of the applications that quantum computer can be used is the finance. It's a portfolio optimization where we'll be knowing like where um, a customer can do a fraud with a coffee, the bank or not. We are trying to um, look into multiple parameters and do a lot of optimization on that. The second application is a search. It's a random array. Like, um, you know, right. If I want to search an element in a database, it takes off. And if I take a classical algorithm, but using an algorithm, quantum algorithm called Grover's algorithm, I can actually speed up it. And uh, in a quantum speed up, it is called, um, O of uh, root N, which is much better than log O of N. It's a time complexity that we get. So it's a random search that I'll be doing and I'll be getting, um, much faster. Database, uh, database retrieval. The third is the chemistry where we'll be like doing a, a simulation that, um, since I talk about the um, different simulations, right. Of caffeine and all. So what we do is like, we simulate a lot of chemistry molecules to have more drugs discovery and all sort of things so that we can have a better, um, uh, cure for a disease and also we, um, simulate a lot of molecules for that. The fourth is a machine learning where we try to like, um, run a lot of machine learning algorithms on quantum computers which is also called as quantum machine learning QML, which is actually a um, trending topic right now. And, th and the fifth one is the encryption where we are trying to find the encryption finding, which is, um, which is basically the factorization that we are trying to find out by the Schwarz algorithm. And the last one is the optimization that we do by quantum tunneling. This is some of the future of quantum te technology where we are finding a quantum advantage. This is, uh, there is, there is more applications, 
but in this slide i have just mentioned the six of it now let us let us look uh, at some other quantum gates that we have like in um, classical computers how we have gates like x gate nor gate and all in quantum computer also similarly we have all gates it's not something like uh, magic we are doing at quantum computers no we also have gates like classical systems so let me talk about some of the gates here so one of the gate is poly, poly x gate it just flips a qubit from 0 to 1 and vice versa so this poly gate you can actually consider as an odd gate in uh, classical systems in a classical system not gate also like just convert 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 but it's not gate in quantum computer it is called as poly x gate which flips a qubit from 0 to 1 and vice versa now we have a hadamard gate which actually puts a qubits into a superposition of states remember how i talked about a superposition we um where a coin can be in zero and one at the same time. To put that superposition, we have this gate, which is called as Hadamard gate. So if you apply Hadamard gate, your coin will be in superposition, your qubit basically. So the third gate I want to talk about is a control knot gate, which is uh, actually a C naught gate. It actually flips the second qubits, only the first qubit is one. So it, it more or less basically acts as a target qubit. If the target qubit is zero, it won't do anything. But if the target qubit is one, it will flip, it will flip the qubit. So, um, you know, in um, all programming language, based can be considered Java, be considered Python or something. We always have a hello world program, right? In classical systems. So similarly, in quantum computer also, we have a hello world program, which is called as Bell state. So Bell state is considered a hello world program in quantum computing. So what is Bell state now? So Bell state are specific quantum states of two qubits that represent the simplest example of quantum entanglement. So in this quantum entanglement, I'll be entangling uh, the qubit zero and qubit one in such a sense that I'll be knowing that if the qubit zero is head, the qubit one will be also head. So this is the simplest example of quantum entanglement. So in this circuit diagram, the edge gate puts the first qubit into superposition and the C naught gate flips both and does not flip the second qubit. So remember uh, excuse how Excuse me, talk... excuse me, uh, Sanjay. Okay. The participants are saying, uh, just go a bit slow. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> so, um, so this bell state, uh, I'll just explain about the qubit uh, zero. So qubit zero, uh, since I uh, had applied the Hadamard gate, it will be like um, putting this qubit into uh, zero and one state both, right? Because since I mentioned superposition is uh, having a both state at the same time. So qubit zero will have zero and one both state and Q1 won't have anything. And initially all the qubit starts at zero. So both this will be zero, zero at one time. And when I applied the Hadamard gate, it will be zero and one at the same time. So for zero here, the qubit one won't do anything, but for one, it will like change the qubit zero to one. So the final output of this circuit will be a zero, zero or one, one. It cannot be one, zero or zero, one. So that's a simple bell state that we make. So the output will be always zero, zero or one, one. It cannot be like one, zero, zero, one. This is a simple entanglement because if qubit one, zero is ahead, the second qubit will also be head. If the qubit zero is tail, the second qubit will also be tail. That's why the bell state is considered as an example of quantum entanglement. I uh, don't worry. I'll be just explaining this uh, more into the Jupyter notebook and actually we'll be coding out the circuit in the practical session. So, and that time, if you have some questions, you can anyways pause me anytime. So I'll just code this out the circuit diagram in the um, actual quantum computer and let's see like how we can do it. So, so there are like two ways. So if you want to, um, Try out this uh, quantum computer so you can actually go on IBM quantum experience and you can go to the first link in this and you can click on launch lab. So once you click on launch lab, a Jupyter notebook will be open up. So, and Jupyter notebook is a Python notebook. It is used to run cell by cell uh, Python code. So you can select a Python three here and you will get a Jupyter notebook here. Okay. So, and more or less like to come um, to code this quantum computer, we, we again use the Python and it's not something like new language you have to learn and you have to learn some new language and syntax for um, coding or quantum computer. No, it's a simple Python language that you have to learn for doing it. So let's begin by importing a simple statement. So from Qiskit, Qiskit is our um, library that we use. We'll import all. Import start. Sir, uh, kindly increase the font size, please. Oh, okay. Now? Or... Writing. Little bit more. Now? No, it's fine, sir. Yeah. So from Qiskit, so Qiskit is more or less a Python library that we use for accessing the quantum computer. And we have just, I have just imported a star. Now to build out a quantum circuits, we need a quantum register. So if I, for building a quantum register, I can simply do QR is equal to quantum register. 
and I'll be building since in the circuit diagram I showed there is there will be two qubits, so I'll be putting out two qubits here. And now my cube now my two I have two quantum register in, in my variable QR. Similarly, I'll be using a classical registers for um, taking out the results from quantum computers and displaying it on the classical systems. So similarly, I'll be doing a classical register here. Same of two qubits, two bits. Now, so now I have the two, uh, two quantum register and two classical register. Now, if I want to build out a quantum circuit out of it, there's a simple command that we can use QC is, is equal to quantum register, quantum circuit, sorry. And I can just pass the quantum register and a classical register here. This has built my quantum circuit. And at any point of time, if I want to see my, how my quantum circuit is actually looking at, I can do QC dot draw at any moment and I can see my quantum circuit. So now you can see I have two qubits, Q0 and Q1. That's uh, the quantum register that we built out. And this is a classical register that we took. So by this command, we actually built out a quantum circuit now. And QC dot draw at any moment of time, if you want to see your circuit diagram looking, you can just do QC dot draw. And now since the circuit diagram I showed on the Q0, Q1, Q0 bit, I'll be just putting out a Hadamard gate. So I can just do QC dot H and H represents for Hadamard gate and I'll be putting on the qubit zero. So I'll just put zero, and I'll print. Now, again, if I want to see how my quantum circuit is looking at, I can just do QC dot draw again. And see, it is it was very simple to put a Hadamard gate in front of Q0. So I just put a Hadamard gate in front of Q0. Now I have to put a C0 gate in uh, qubit zero and qubit one, right? As per the bell di bells diagram that I have shown. So I can do QC dot CX zero and one. And now again, I have put the C uh, C0 gate. And again, I'll just draw the circuit to see if my uh, gates have been properly applied or not. And see, by putting a dot CX through the quantum circuit, I have actually put a, ga a gate CX gate to it with a control bit here and the target here. Okay. And now, since I told, right, we have to like send this circuit to the quantum circuit and we have to actually measure it in classical computers. We have to actually take the Q1 result on C0 and the Q1 result on Q1, C1, sorry. So to do that, I have to take the measurement and measurement I can do QC dot measure. Where I'll be again passing the quantum register. Like the quantum registers results should be in the classical register. So I'll be putting out here the classical registers. Now again, I have put the measurements here and I can just do QC dot draw to see the measurements have been applied or not. So now you can see the Q0 result will be in the Q0 result will be in the C0 and the Q1 result will be in the C1. So that's how like we are taking the result of quantum computers into classical registers. So we have just done the measurement and now our circuit diagram is ready. This is a simple bell state diagram that we have built out from the, from the previous slide that I have shown you. And now, now there's two things, right? I can simply uh, send this circuit to the actual real quantum computer, but um, you know, right, quantum computers, a lot of people use it from IBM. So it's more or less it goes into queue and it takes a lot of time to execute sometime because there's a long queue where other people are also trying to run your circuit. But here, if you want, we have like a simulator, which is a classical simulator. We can actually verify your circuit there. Like if your circuit is correct or not. So we'll be like uh, running this circuit on a classical simulator first. And we'll be seeing if we are getting, if the circuit diagram is correct or not, and then we'll be moving out to a real quantum computer. Okay. So let's uh, first verify our circuit. If I if our circuit are correct, correct or not. So I'll just take a simulator from a module called AER. So AER have like all the backends, all the simulator sort of things. So I can do just get backend and I'll take a classical simulator. simulator. So now. I have like a um, simulator from here and now to execute this circuit, there's a simple command that we can use. I can just do execute and this execute parameters take the quantum circuit, which is our QR. And now it takes a backend. Now our backend will be a simulator here. I can just execute. Just one second. I'm not sure which version of Cascade I'm installed in this. Maybe not sure if um, I'm using some older version of Cascade. I think I need to figure out which, or I can show you some. 
Let me just show you something here. I think this has the proper words in it. So here it um here I was actually so simulator. I have just taken the um simulator here and I was trying to execute the circuit with run a statement. And I will just do a statement here. So now this execute statement actually executes a circuit on the classical systems. And now if you want to take the result out of it, you can take it in a result variable. And you can do result is equal to run result. Now to actually, um, the result of this is basically a probability of a lot of um, lot of results because we actually run the quantum circuit thousand times because a quantum, quantum computer is more or less like a probabilistic model. So we take a lot of, uh, we run circuit a lot of time and then we take the uh, probability of the best things. Now to see the probability, we can actually import a module called histogram. It's from tool dot. So now in this plot histogram, I can just pass on my result or get counts. And now, and now, as you can see, I told, right, there is a, um, we run the circuit thousand times and we have the thousand probability measurements here. So if you add this all, it will be one. So now, as I mentioned, like there will be, um, Okay, so this is showing previous results actually. Just one minute, I'll just change this to the Yeah, so actually the result which I've been shown, it was actual from actual quantum computer, which actually I have executed down and it was in the variable. So it displayed, so you can just ignore it for now. Yes, so this is the actual result from the simulator we get. And as I mentioned in the bell state, there will be like zero, zero and one, one will be the actual answer. And it has a 50, 50% probability. So this is the actual output of uh, the bell state. So now if the qubit is zero, the Q1 is also zero. And if the qubit uh, zero is one, the qubit one will be also zero. So that's the entanglement. So simply I have just entangled the two qubits and I'll be giving the same results. So now I'm sure that my circuit is correct. And now uh, I have just run it on a classical system and my circuit is giving the correct output. Now I can move to the actual quantum computer and run the circuit on an actual quantum computer. So now just to run on an actual quantum computer. So now to load your account, you can just do qubit um, ibmq.load account because you have to load your account to use the quantum computer. So you can just do ibmq.load account. This will actually load your quantum computer, your uh, credentials into this. And now you can take a provider here, which will be IBMQ dot get provider. IBMQ. And once we have the provider, again, the same process will repeat. Now we'll be taking a backend, which will be an actual quantum computer. And backend is more or less like where you want to run your circuit. So backend can be a classical, classical simulator. Backend can be a quantum computer simulator. So now, since I have run my circuit on the classical simulator, I'll be taking in a quantum computer simulator. So I'll just do provider dot get backend, save like I did for classical. I'll just take one device, IBM device. So this is just the name of a quantum device, and I can just verify if the quantum device has been loaded in the backend. So once I have loaded this. Now again, if I want to just uh, run the circuit, I can again do execute statement. Same thing we did for this, but this time I'll be passing the quantum circuit and I'll be passing the backend as a new backend that we did. And the new backend is backend that we created now. So now, I think there is some package issues that um, I need to change, but. I have a backup session for this and I'll just demonstrate here. Sorry for that. So now whenever, um, till this stage, you were clear, right? We got the, um, actual circuit output, um, on the classical system. And then we just load the quantum, IBM quantum account. And we just, um, 
load it here, the IBM queue provider, and we get the backend as this. And again, to run the circuit, I just do execute QC is equal to backend is equal to backend. And then uh, to, and whenever you're running this job on an actual quantum computer, it actually goes into a queue because there's a lot of people who are accessing the uh, quantum computer. And um, so we have a basically a queue and from the queue, we take the job one by one. So if you want to check the status of your job, like where your job has been till now, so you can, we have a module called um, job monitor, which you can import from the mo uh, monitor, monitor module. And if you give this job to this job monitor, it will actually say your status, like your job has been sent successfully or your job has been pending or your job has been queued or now it says the job has been run successfully. So that means the job has been run and now I can extract the results same way that I did for classical systems. I can do job dot result and uh, Again, to plot the histogram, I can plot histogram. And this is the actual result from an actual quantum computer and not from classical systems. But now here, one might question me, like uh, you said, there will be no zero one and one zero. Why I can see zero one and zero one here. So that is what we called as a quantum error right now. Today's world, you might have heard that we have a lot of quantum errors and this is exactly the same quantum errors. So in quantum computer, we have a lot of errors that is going on, but given the probability, the highest probability we take the result. So you can see, I can make out from this result as 001 has a probability of 40, 47% and 11 has a probability of 47%. And this has very low probability. So I can discard this. So this was only for two qubits. We have this much amount of error, but as soon as we grow on the qubits, we have more errors. That's what like one of the um, thing that we need to, like we are working, um, entire world is working on, on the quantum error correction code so that we can minimize this error and increase the number of qubits. And, um, yeah, this was more or less about the, um, practical session. And I'll be sharing this notebook with you so that you can actually practice out a lot. And for accessing this quantum lab, it's a, it's free for everyone and everyone can access it. You just need to log in to the IBM Q experience, ibmquantum.com, and you'll be able to play a lot of our quantum computers. And I'll be sharing this notebook and. Since the session is recorded, you can actually um, try to code out the circuits just like you build in a classical systems. It's all the way same. It's not nothing new magical that we do. It just the circuits and the um, gates and all follow some different principles and not the classical systems. And yeah, I guess that was for from my side on this um, live demo. And I just wanted to talk about this um, quantum guard thing. So. If you are a beginner and you want to explore a lot of things about quantum computing, so quantum grad is a one-stop solution that uh, I have built as a nonprofit organization to help a lot of people because there was a time where I was not able to like, um, catch up on the quantum computing and I was struggling a lot, but so to help a lot of people, I just spin up this part up. So it's more or less, it has like all the articles you can check out and go. And there's a lot, like lot of la latest news that we have latest publications. And then there will be like latest events that is all happening. So if you wish to have attend some events and you are, um, finding it difficult to find all the events all across the globe. You can come here and see there's a lot of events that are happening on quantum computing, which is a lot of them are free of course you can attend. And if you're looking for jobs in quantum computing, we have a lot of openings as well. And similarly, if you're looking for some books, we have a lot of books as well. And this is a global content creation platform. So you can actually, um, you can actually click on right here and I, you can start writing about it and we actually look into it and we can, you can publish your articles on quantum grad. Similarly, it is a marketplace as well. So if your organization is doing some hackathon and you want a lot of participation to know about it, you can just submit your information and within, within 48 hours, we publish it on our website. So that's what about the quantum grad. And lastly, I would like to say like anybody can learn quantum computing to be very honest. I'm not, I'm also not from a physics, physics background. I'm from electrical and um, computer engineering master's student. So it's just, I want to say like anybody can learn quantum computing. And um, if you have any doubts regarding today's session, or if you want to get started and you need some guidance, something, feel free to drop me a mail or um, connect me over to LinkedIn. And that was all for today. So uh, I now I'll be opening the stage for any questions if you have. Uh, there are no few questions in the chat box itself. Okay. Uh, one is how is the correlation defined? So correlation is defined, um, more or less how it's a mathematical thing that we do. Um, it's more or like the Hadamard gate. We, we have a matrix and all we, um, I'm not sure, um, mathematical, uh, I cannot write it somewhere here. So we have like, um, 
probabilistic model like how we do a lot of probability and we do a lot of uh, calculation on of it and um, we have like zeros and one defined out and uh, we have a certain probability like um, if this probability is given to this and the other probability will also be this so that's what in the uh, in the bell state diagram you can see if the qubit zero was zero it was also zero but with the same probability so that's all a like, correlation is defined in terms of mathematical terms actually so that's what like uh, quantum physics needs you to know some of the basics of maths of linear algebra and all sort of things to define the correlation. So I think um, I need to write it out a lot of mathic mathematical equation. I can send you the draft if you want later, the mathematical equation correlation. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, there's another question uh, by Dr. Anuja. Uh, uh, she wants to know like on IBM quantum experience is to run program on quantum server. So why calling add quiz kit to run on quantum computer, not quantum server? Um, add circuit where? Uh, you just uh, uh, read the chat. Maybe the question is. Yeah, I was just going to this Jupyter node where, uh, where I call that statement. J uh, Any other queries from the participants? No more queries from the participants. Uh, Anuja, you can ask yourself, you can clarify your question. Dr. Yeah, Anuja? Yeah. Uh, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Sanjay. Anuja, yeah. this side. Actually, my first question was like, uh, can we, you ex whatever demonstration you are giving that you are giving on IBM quantum experience, is this yeah. free to use, which you, I think later you said that this is free, we can use it freely. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you can, second you can. Well, yeah, second question is like, as we talk about deep learning or any, uh, we call it server, but on quantum, when you are calling that this will run it on quantum computer, we are not calling yeah. it quantum server. Why is it so? No. So here is the thing, like it's all correlated. So whenever I call this backend, right, this backend, this simulator, this, this was the classical system one. So yeah. this is also actually we have hosted out somewhere, but this is like uh, limited to a classical system. It's not running on actual quantum computer. It's a classical system that is giving you the result back. And more or less when I call this IBM Q, I load my server credentials and whenever I do backend, and this is the actual name of quantum computer that we use. So it's all the coding part that we do. So if you do the get backend, if you take this quantum computer, it's more or less running on the quantum circuit itself. And here IBM server basically means like the transportation part as I shown in this, um, I can, uh, on the video part, like how the pulses are being sent. So on a quantum server, you can consider this as a quantum systems where it goes. And then actually we convert it into pulses and then pulses is given to the quantum circuit. It's not like directly this backend and everything print statements are giving no from this. We actually, this goes to the IBM systems, then IBM systems converted into pulses. Because you know, right, um, there's a different thing because um, not everything can consume whatever you're giving. You have to translate the um, information that your system, that, that your machine can consume. So quantum yeah. computer consume all this information into pulses. So we need to convert them into pulses. And then when quantum computer returns back the pulses, I have to again convert that into bits so that classical system can understand. So there is like conversion, encoding and decoding that we have to do before giving it and before taking out the output. Okay. One more thing, more like you uh, in your output, you are showing that it's giving output in, uh, it will give that circuit will give output as per your gate knowledge, which you have given us that it will yeah. give output in zero, zero or one, one form, but it is yeah. giving some errors also in form of zero, one and one, zero that you yeah. call quantum error correction, but gate, as far as we know, and as, because I'm very new to this quantum. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm asking gate always give output according to what is like gate has to work why it's giving this kind of wrong yeah. output uh, why is it so yeah because you know I, I told right in a quantum in a classical system more or less you get zero or one so given a state um so consider one bit so my, if i give you one classical bit it can be zero or one okay but if i give you one qubit right it can be zero it can be one it can be one and zero both as well so there's a lot of things and, um, this is the one thing superposition. And the second thing is qubits are very fragile. You know, whenever you see a quantum computer anywhere, if you go on quantum computer, you won't see it in a like open somewhere. 
it will be first enclosed in a dilution chamber and outside of dilution chamber it will be in a like um noise free glasses and all so if you just google it ivan quantum one you will see like uh it will be all enclosed in a glass chamber so more or less it's very fragile it's like very um prone to uh noise and all if anything noise comes all the outputs get distorted so there's a lot of errors that we are trying to minimize by keeping it into a closed temperature and keeping the dilution chamber and then noise and all everything so there's a lot of things that we are doing so that the qubits have the less errors and even if we have the errors uh we try to minimize it by using some sort of interference and what i mean by interference is like um, you know how your noise cancellation um, earphones work where yeah. we like um, send out a negative uh, amplitude mm. pulse and cancel out it so similarly in mm. here also on a computer we use interference to reduce these errors and all so we have a lot of things that is going on and here the gates are not as simple as the classical systems so one right right thank you thank you that's all yeah. from my side thank you shikhan for giving me uh, this uh, for unmuting me and clearing my all doubts thank you uh, one more question is there please mm -hmm. more details about the relationship between quantum computing and artificial intelligence yeah not sure where is the yeah so so here is the relationship between a uh, quantum computer and relationship so um, so how i explain like uh, artificial intelligence so artificial intelligence you know it's uh, like a subset of deep learning and a machine learning sort of thing so now if i give you like a uh, 200 gb of data or a lot of data and i told you to like um, process it and just give me the results back according to like if uh, in a facebook um, if you see there is like uh, models that has been training for 99 days and all so if i give you a result and if i if i tell you to give me the you train the model for 9 days and after 9 days if you make some mistakes then again it will take another 9 days to take it out so that's a that's a waste of time right and you know right data centers and all burns a lot of power so it's not an efficient way that we are doing this things so we need to have a different architecture where we can actually run the uh, your model train and all sort of things so that we consume less power so that we consume less number of dates so that we can have a better results in a less number of time so that's what like a uh, quantum computer comes into picture and um, if you are thinking about a relationship uh, you can check it out quantum machine learning qml where we are trying to run um, machine learning models on quantum computers for a uh, faster results and all sort of things so we are trying to like integrate um, quantum machine learning quantum like machine learning and quantum computers so that we can run a lot of things and we can get uh, the results faster that's what the relationship we can think about in the hardware perspective Let so one more question up. is there. So be a bit tight on a statement specific to transmon bit. Uh, uh, Anirban sir, you uh, you may uh, talk and you can discuss this. Yeah. So no, no, I just told that when certain statements are coming like generic, but they are specific to transmon qubits means like dilution refrigerator and such things. So for other talk, it may create confusion. No, so um, dilution chamber is more or less. Because, like you, um, you told that means it will be in dilution refrigerator. That's specific to the kind of qubit you are using, transmon qubit. Like for us, means it's optical qubit. Means somebody is using NB centers, and then audience may be confused. Means unless that is specified that this is specific to superconducting qubits. Yeah, so it's it's more or less the hardware technology that we are using. So it's more or less you can generalize it to if you want to keep it in a large. Um, Say like at, at cool temperature because for superconducting we have to like keep it in a like a super cold temperature and that's why we use the dilution chamber. So a lot of other companies use, but it's more or less the technology is different, but more or less they also have to keep it at a low temperature because there is not much research that has been done for um, actually keeping the qubits at a room temperature and working out. So like transmon bit and all are some different topic. I don't know. I should take it out here, but yeah. you can consider a dilution chamber to be generalized for more or less keeping the qubits at cold temperature and we achieve this by dilution chamber so let me know if you have uh, some while you are muted yeah, any other question please uh, sir one my i want to ask question how mm -hmm. quantum computers are different from parallel computers can't different. the same thing can be run on the parallel computers Pa parallel computer you mean classical systems or classical system yeah parallel processing we are using for vector computation mm -hmm. we are using the parallel computers so how the these two are different 
Yeah, so more or less, it's um, you know, um, the people are like a um, bit more confused on the, the classical system and the quantum computer. So let me give an example. Um, how much faster you can multiply two into seven on a classical system? Within milliseconds, microseconds, two into seven, a simple multiplication. But if I give the same multiplication to a quantum computer, it will perform worse. It will like perform worse than a classical computer. So it's like quantum computers are used for some of like um, very special use cases where actually a classical system fails. So consider factorization. If I give you 250, uh, um, 250 factor, just factor a thousand, thousand factorization or 10 million factorization, our classical, our classical systems cannot do that. Since I explained you, right, like superposition, we can get uh, all eight states in one go and we can actually simulate caffeine in much faster rate. So there's a lot of things. If a classical system goes into cal calculating, calculating, it will take years to perform that calculation. But quantum computer, we have these properties called like superposition entanglement, where we can actually get the results much faster. Okay. And that's what like, it, it makes it different because, um, and to be honest in the future, quantum computer, we won't be replacing the classical systems. There will be like classical systems also used, but there are specific use cases where quantum computers will be using. Like, uh, since I mentioned about the future, right? Um, if I give you a lot of use cases and all sort of things, and, um, suppose if I give you, um, let me, let me give you an example of optimization. So there is like a destination point A and point B. Okay. And there is three way to reach, reach that destination. One is the roadway. One is the like waterways and one is the, um, another way. So all routes have four, four ways. So now to reach destination A to B, there's a lot of optimization that you can do. You can consider all the probabilities and combination and probability of this. There will be like a lot of ways you can take it out. But if I give this optimization problem to give me all the possible ways for reaching A to B with roadways, with waterways and all sorts of ways, classical system takes a lot of time, will take a lot of time because it requires a lot of power and it will take a lot of things because it doesn't have that much um, like hardware to reach that problem. But if I give this to a quantum computer, quantum computer will be able to better optimize the problem. It will be better able to solve because it has like uh, exponential speed up in terms of calculation, in terms of computing. And that's where like a uh, quantum computer, we are thinking more or less of using it to optimization drug discovery. If I give you uh, five ML of this, 10 ML of this, hundred ML of this, and a lot of things I'll do. And I give it to you now optimize, like do a lot of combinations, do a lot of combination and give me the results back. Classical computer takes a lot of time on this and it's nearly impossible for a classical systems to give all this optimization problem. But yeah, quantum computers can give because of the exponential speed up because okay. of the properties of qubits. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving clear understanding between the classical and the quantum computers using practical using coding as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. So let me know if you have any questions or uh, I can just uh, share this um, notebook with um, Shika ma'am and then she can take over. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so Thank much, you, Sanjay, for being uh, there in these old hours of yours. Thank you yeah, so yeah, much. No worries, no worries, yeah. so, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you time. so much. Yeah. Uh, participants, we will be joining after 15 minutes. So we will be having a short break of the 15 minutes. Then we will join back. At 12? Yeah, at 12. Okay. Okay. Our next session will start at 12 o'clock. While please stop recording, start recording again for the new session.